Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the first review video for the Asian Cup, a tournament that honestly started out a little bit slow but has picked up considerably steam uh, starting with the third match day when we had quite some interesting results, no upsets yet but some of the favorites had to work really really hard to avoid being upset. For me, the most convincing team surely has to be Iran, hence I chose to wear them, uh, getting a 4-1 win over Palestine, and that looked easy and could have been more goals as well, although also Qatar looked surprisingly good, but you know, it was against Lebanon, who are the lowest seeded team in their group. Uh, but they also, the defending champions, also looked fine. Uh, it's still a little bit weird seeing their performance at the last World Cup uh, there. Uh, the East Asian giants Japan and South Korea had to work hard to get their wins. And Australia also had their hands full, but you know, all got a win and are off to a good start. Since this is my soccer universe that we're talking here, of course, I have to mention former LASK players also putting their stamp on the Asian Cup. And that makes the Asian Cup really exciting to me, to be honest. Uh, we had first Ali Almas, the top scorer of last time's uh, Asian Cup, scoring another goal. He played for a short while when LASK was still in second division. And then, of course, Keito Nakamura, LASK star from the last season now at Stade de Reims, got a brilliant goal for Japan as well. So I'm always happy to see I would say we review briefly the games before we then look into the um, current standings and the projections going forward and also the games that are uh, have happening starting actually on the day of posting, of course. And as I said, the opener between Qatar and Le Lebanon was a rather one-sided affair. Uh, there was an early off the goal, but Afif really put his stamp on the game, being assisted by Almas Ali in the 45th minute. Then Ali scores uh, the second goal right after the half, and then Afif, with a really nice move uh, in the 96, gets the third goal, Qatar off to a good start. And, you know, they're host nation, they're also the defending champions, as we are, 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 are said. You wouldn't expect much more. Then we had uh, Australia having as actually the hands full against an India team, a lively India team. Maybe not as exciting as the last time around, but you know, last time they started against an easy opponent. This, this time Australia, of course, is a big name team. Uh, Jack Irvine and Boss uh, gave uh, Australia the 2 0 win, but it was, as I said, hard work. And I really wish that India would kick probably into the neck neck gear at one point and actually really become a powerhouse that they can very well be uh, in Asia. Um, we had China, Tajikistan. I mean, China had some chance, had some offside goal disallowed, but that was a rough watch. And I didn't see anything of Uzbekistan, Syria, but I don't regret doing it, Kim. There were no goals. However, Japan against Vietnam. Uh, Started very well for uh, Japan, getting an early goal through Takumi Minamino and it looked all going fine. And then just a few minutes later, Nguyen had already equalized for Vietnam and uh, Pam Tuan Hai uh, gets a go-ahead goal. And at that point, Vietnam was all good for it. They really hit uh, Japan on the, on, on the counter and gave them quite some stuff to uh, think about. And when you thought it goes into the halftime break uh, with a sensational 2-1 lead for Vietnam, uh, Vataro Endo finds Minamino again and he makes it 2-2 and then Keito Nakamura's uh, great performance. He looked a little bit weird being blonder than the usual. Uh, gets the ball from Minamino from far out, uh, launches a rocket in, into the corner. Brilliant goal. He has been a revelation, I have to say. Very happy for him. 3-2 and then Japan could control the second half relatively well in the way that in the 85th gets the fourth goal. The UAE uh, had to also fight a little bit hard, hard against Hong Kong. Hong Kong, uh, they took a lead through penalty. Hong Kong got an equalizer right after the half, but then Al Zab in the 52nd quickly re-establishes the lead for the UAE. And Al Hassani penalty in the 95th minute makes it uh, a proper score. Hong Kong had a, a goal disallowed. I actually want to say uh, we have to watch out for Hong Kong. Uh, given that they have beaten China in the run-up, yes, they are a lowly red re team, but I think they might be up for a surprise. Uh, maybe even two. Uh, I already said Iran were the most convincing performance so far. I mean, uh, Palestine had huge support, of course. 
uh, in the state in the stadium there uh, ran out. I actually I think the the walk on jackets were really cool with the Palestine flag. This is something. It's not about the Palestine flag, but whenever you have a run or jacket where you can pull out the flag on there, especially a little bit more, I don't want to say in, in, in intricate, but you know, with the triangles, that looks actually pretty cool. Um, but they were not much of an opponent to Iran. Iran uh, proved that they're one of the best teams in Asia. Second minute, Ansafart uh, already or, or gave them a 12th minute, uh, Khalisadeh, and then uh, 38. Kayedi had it a 3 nil lead and it was all that come. It was totally 3 nil there. Yes, Seyan pulls one back just before the half, uh, but Asmun in the 55th May makes four. My could have been five. Could have, could, have, could have been six. Iran really pulling the stamp onto the tournament. Lot is also expected from South Korea, to be honest, uh, but they had a, also a rough start against Bahrain. Um, very, very rough first third, third minutes with three. Yellow cards already for South South Korea. I have I have to say I'm not sure if this is the style that uh, Jürgen Klinsmann really wants wants to play. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, hesitant to really see uh, to really think that he was a great appointment for South Korea. But let's see. Uh, they take the lead through Huang uh, in uh, in Bom. Uh, however, Hal Hashash equalizes right after they have and then Lee Kang in that we know from PSG scores two goals in 56 and 68 and South Korea off to a good start but you know they definitely have room to improve that's for sure uh, Iraq was also um, convincing as in Indonesia yes Indonesia also got an equalizer but I have had the Iraq overall looked good a league at the first goal uh, then uh, the 37th equalizer for Indonesia Rashid in the uh, deep and stoppage time re-establishes the lead that was deserved for Iran uh, Iraq at this point uh, they have a goal this is Labal Hussein that makes it 3-1 um, so yeah, they're not very highly rated this time around, but I think they are a decent team. They should finish second in their group. And Jordan also got a rather convincing 4-0 win over Malaysia. A Malaysia team that probably is a little bit out of its depth. Uh, Thailand, a uh, very lively 2-0 win over Kyrgyzstan. Uh, I think Thailand might be one of my favorite teams to watch because, as I said, they're lively, but I don't think they will go uh, very far. And then probably the best game of the tournament so far was between Saudi Arabia and Oman. Of course, huge support for the Saudis in, in their Mancini side. Overall played well. However, uh, very early on, they conceded a penalty that al uh converts um, in the 14th minute. And then Saudi Arabia actually had quite a few chances. Somewhere uh, op open it and you hit the goalie and all that kind of stuff. Uh, playing over quite pleasing, but not getting the goal. And uh, there were even some chances, and especially the second half for Oman in there, I think from a very tight, tight angle, almost make it into the goal if the goalie wouldn't have gotten a hand, hand on it. But then Harib uh, in the 78th minute gets the equalizer for Saul, Saudi Arabia, who then were pushing on to the win. And it seemed like it, uh, all the chances went begging until Al Bulahi. Uh, gets the win in the 96 minute through a header. There were some calls for offside, but if you look at the dribble, it's clearly not an offside. And so also the Arabia, yes, it's a tight 2 1 win, but they were very good, good for it. I think if this score would have been 3 or 4 1, this would have been much more reflective of that game, in my opinion. Uh, and Saudi so Arabia off to a good start, and Oman was definitely the toughest opponent in their group. So if you look now at the standings here, um, we have Qatar uh, ahead of China and very, uh, very set of qualifying that, that that much is for sure. I, th I think um, it's exactly how the, ta that the table stands at that, how we would expect it to move on. Uh, same thing goes for Group B, not much has changed yet. Yeah, the Uzbekistan uh, Syria result was probably not the greatest game, but uh, those two teams are the second and third best in there and it's between the two, two of them. So you would kind of expect a tight game. Uh, there. Uh, Iran, UAE, Hong Kong, pa Palestine. As I said, I think Hong Kong probably could beat Palestine. I'm not sure if they will do anything against Iran. Uh, and then Japan of and Iraq are, of course, the big favorites in their group for moving on. Uh, Jordan and South Korea uh, top the table after their, their wins. They will have a head-to-head -head coming uh, sooner than Thailand and Saudi Arabia are also at the top of, of the group. However, watch out for Oman, who's probably a slightly bigger, better team than Thailand. The third place rating at the moment 
it's not uh, not very indicative. Let's put it that way. Uh, if you look at the projection of the final bracket, uh, basically not much has changed except a few third place teams have been moved around. Uh, I think the biggest one uh, was probably that Thailand is now moving into uh, that and the day they will play Uzbekistan. It still remains that uh, the South Korea-Iran matchup in the quarters that might be a really, really heavy weight fight and then we have to see where it goes if australia and saudi arabia i think that could also be interesting where i definitely would favor saudi arabia to be honest uh as for, for the overall favorites japan and iran i think this is in about japan by a distance so far south korea uh fell a little bit behind because australia got the win but you know i think iran australia uh, japan and iran look to be the best ones so far uh, Australia and South Korea have a little bit of a harder run because they will run into one of the two favorites. So they will have to overperform there. Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Hmm? Yeah, let's see how it will go. And then we have a few upcoming matches. I think Iraq, Japan uh, is a first uh, game where we have to look for first place. Uh, other than that, I don't think the Syria, Australia potentially, but I don't think this will be interesting. Uh, that, that much Australia should win that one. Uh, we have uh, Jordan against South Korea. Jordan already having a good start. South Korea, if they want to win, win the group, better get a result against uh, Jordan. And other than that, yeah, Oman played Thailand. Uh, that will tell us how good Thailand are actually. In any case, that was it for me from the Asia Asian Cup. Uh, I actually watched a few games live. I probably... Um, I'm trying to get, get in of the in interesting game, but also with the FCON. And you know, it's usually during work hours, but that actually is not a negative because you can put it on while you're doing some programming. So that's fine for me. In any case, please let me know what you thought about, about the Asian Cup. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!